it's better for him to um, be a dual citizen so you know like he can he can practice the rights of being a Filipino <laughs> Hi friends! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome! My name is Donna. I am a Filipino mom living here in America. I share about mom life, cooking, gardening, my immigration story, and about immigration in general, about coming here in America. So if you're interested with that one, please consider subscribing. I would love for you to be part of our family and for me to help you. <laughs> so for today's vlog this is part of my report of marriage and report of birth series if you haven't watched my report of marriage yet i'll put the link in the description box below go watch it first and then watch this one okay so it will be like um what to call that step by step process okay so today i i am going to share to you how did i submitted or how did i report um, the birth of our son in the philippine embassy or in the philippine consulate again um, i have known so many people um, that they didn't report the birth of their kids in the philippine embassy or in the philippine consulate um that's just their decision and everyone has their own decision or opinion about it but for us me and my husband decided to um, report the birth of our son because we want him to be a dual citizen in the philippines so um he can also because we all know or maybe some of you may not know that american citizens are cannot i already explained this in my report of marriage um vlog that's why i told you to just watch it first before watching this so you will understand as well um the reason that we want him to to report the the reason that we want to report the birth of our son is because for our son if he wants to you know buy a land in the future in the philippines he can do that right he can do that it's better for him to um be a dual citizen so you know like he can he can practice the rights of being a filipino like like that buy the land um what you call that vote uh, if you if he wants to vote or to stay longer in the philippines without paying um visa or something after the immigration if he wants to stay there like five years whatever or few years stuff like that that's his decision but we just want him to have that opportunity as well not to be restricted with other rights of being a filipino or if he wants to have a business in the philippines and stuff like that but um yeah that's it so yes um also because reporting the birth of your child is one of the requirements also in submitting a dual citizenship or getting a passport filipino passport passport <laughs> filipino passport <laughs> for your kids okay so these are your requirements i'm just gonna show to you i have my laptop here with me and i really hope that you can see my eyes i'm sorry i need to wear my glasses because you can't i cannot see far. okay so it says here that that the report of birth is a declaration of a person furnishing information on the birth abroad of a filipino child it is important for filipinos permanent permanently residing abroad to promptly register with the consulate the birth of the child in order for such a birth to be registered with the office of the civil registrar general in manila okay when a child is born abroad to parents who are both filipino citizens or to one parent who is a filipino citizen by the way when i gave birth to him i was a filipino citizen one who has not been naturalized as a citizen of a foreign country that's me the child must be immediately reported to the philippine embassy or consulate which exercises jurisdiction over the place of birth okay so ideally it says here the birth must be reported to the consulate within 12 months after its occurrence when the parents neglect to report the birth within 12 months the birth 
may nevertheless be recorded upon the determination of the consular officer of satisfactory evidence on the authenticity of the report. In this case, the person who executed the report shall furnish the consulate with an explanation surrounding the delay in the reporting of the birth. I will gonna show I will gonna share this to you about the um, affidavit of delayed registration. Um, fortunately, we haven't we didn't do that because do that because we filed um, my son's birth report of birth when he was 10 months old. So he's still good with a 12 month period. Okay, so here are the requirements. I'll put all the link in the description box below and I'll put also pictures right here or here. <laughs> so you'll know. Okay, I am in Philippine Consulate LA.org slash consulate services, by the way. Okay, you can Google that. <laughs> Okay, send by mail to the consulate the following documents. Um, disclaimer, every state has different consulates, so please check first in Google if what is the mailing address for reporting of birth for your kids, okay? So these are the requirements. Four original duly accomplished report of birth forms, either typewritten or handwritten. We typed everything, that's four the birth certificate, attending position, um, attending nurse or midwife, Filipino parent or Filipino parents, the person whose birth is being reported if over 18 years of age or the foreign parent only if none of the above can accomplish the report. That's it. Report of birth forms, all forms. Number two is original and four photocopies of child certificate of birth issued by the local authorities or by the local county registrar. Number three, original and four photocopies of the data page of the Philippine passports of Filipino parents. So I set my Filipino passport the first page. Um, in case the Filipino parent became a naturalized citizen of another country after the time of child's birth, but before reporting it to the consulate parent also per present sorry press present <laughs> present also original and four photocopies of the naturalization certificate and proof of philippine citizenship example philippine passport or birth certificate issued by the philippine statistics authority or psa and, or, and then number five is original and four photocopies of the data page of the foreign passport or foreign driver's license of foreign parent. Original number six, original and four photocopies of the father's birth certificate. And then seven is original and four photocopies of the birth certificate of the mother. Number eight is original and four photocopies of the marriage certificate of the parents. Number nine, the fee of this service is $25 in cash, postal money order, or cashier's check payable to the Philippine Con Consulate General. So we made a $25 um, cashier's check to the Philippine Consulate General. And number 10 is a United States Postal Services or USPS Priority Mail, Priority Mail Express Envelope. The USPS Priority Mail Envelope has to be self-addressed. Postage postage prepaid with USPS tracking. So you need to do that the same as the marriage report of marriage. Okay, additional requirements are about, I'll put all the link again in the description box below. If your parents are not married or stuff like that, there's like additional requirements for that one. So kindly check that one. Um, but yeah, so the trick is they wanted original for everything. And again, um, I explained this to my report of marriage flag that I was so nervous in sending my um, original documents and reporting my marriage. So by this time, when I reported the uh, when I reported the birth of our son, my husband and I decided not to send the original copies of everything. Okay, because we just don't we just don't want to take risk. Um, I've I've read some of the Facebook groups that they're um, documents were, were stolen, not stolen, lost. 
So I'm very nervous for that one because you know it's very hard to get documents, especially from the Philippines. Okay. So yes. So what we did is we went to the bank. We went to our bank and then get all the documents certified through copy meaning like for example for our marriage certificate like PSA marriage certificate the original um, we showed the original to the bank officer there or bank staff and then she showed that and then they have a copy they have a copy a separate copy saying witnessing that he saw or he or she saw the original copy and certified through copy and stuff like that and, she put a stamp in there and then that's basically the certified true copy of that document like for example we sent the photocopy of our marriage certificate psa and then four copies because they wanted four copies in each and then on top of that one we put the certified true copy form from our bank stating that that personnel saw our, our original copy and there's a stamp in there and again all the forms the birth form report of birth form were um, notarized with a stamp with our bank um, for free so again check your bank if they will notarize everything for free okay because here in america i think they do that i'm not sure about other countries though so yes um, yeah, that's what we all um, did. And after, if I'm not mistaken, after two, three weeks, they sent us back the report of birth, a form of my son. And just last week, I told my mom to um, get the birth certificate of my um, son in the PSA. In, um, in the PSA, I I just sent my mom um, authorization letter like this. I just like to omit my concern just like that and then sent it to her. Um, and yeah, I mean, she already submitted for to get the birth certificate of our son. But yeah, that's it. And I hope you learned something. Um, I really hope that I was not too fast. But yeah. Um, Whatever your decision is, if you want to report the birth of your kids, that's your decision. I just have, me and my husband just have our own decision about it. And my own purpose here is just to share with you. And also you can learn something. And I really hope you learn something. But yeah, um, that's it for today's vlog. I really hope that you like it. Please don't forget to subscribe. Again, I would love for you to be part of our family. And I'll see you in my next vlog. Bye, guys. Love you. Mwah.